Hello everyone, how are you doing? Finally, I reopened my flower stand after I closed for two weeks to spend time with my mom. And last week I had a pre-order and I didn't have enough flowers to open my stand. But look at this. This is the flowers that I have this week. A lot of dahlias, you guys, because you know, the temperature dropped and the dahlias don't like the heat so much. So now they happy, very happy. And these are the basil. Smells so good. My customers are going to be very happy tomorrow. Last year in fall, I found this plant on sale. I think it's about $5. So I just bought it and plant them in a the garden. It smells so good, oh my goodness. If you know what this is, please let me know, okay? Oh, it's gonna look good with... I really love using basil in my flower bouquet because they make my bouquet smell so good and smell so unique that, you know, other bouquets in the market usually don't have this smell. And it gives my customers or the person who received the bouquets from my customer feel like, you know, they really get a garden bouquet that the flowers, you know, are from garden. The only problem with basil is that they can flop easily in the flower arrangement. And there are about three ways to prevent that. First, you should cut them when they mature. And that means, you know, all the flowers are almost gone. You can only see the seed part here. And secondly, when you arrange the flowers bouquet with basil, you know, try to use the other flowers that have stronger stem to support the basil. Like the sedum autumn joy. I'm going to put it here. So just in case, you know, tomorrow if this flop, it will flop on sedum autumn joy. But if I don't put sedum autumn joy there, it will flop like this. And the third tip to prevent basil from flopping is to not put the bouquet in refrigerator. And I think a lot of you guys probably know about this, you know, especially if you cook a lot, you would know that, you know, basil in the refrigerator, they can turn like, you know, wimpy or like brown. Um, you know, especially when your refrigerator is like very cold. These are one of my favorite dahlias variety. I remember, you know, they are very first dahlia tubers that I bought. And I have been saving the tubers for, I think three or four years already, you know, since I started growing dahlias. This is also my favorite dahlias too. I am so excited to use this blue flowers because, you know, this time of the year, we don't have a lot of blue flowers anymore. Ah, ha, ha. just broke my dahlias. Ah, I just broke my dahlias. Gonna add a new one right here. Yeah. I am not sure I am going to sell this bouquet with red flowers tomorrow because, you know, red is not popular for my flower stand. So here what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pair these red flowers with a lot of pink cinnias and celosia and also, you know, the pastel color to tone it down a little bit. I don't waste any stem of my flower at all. You know, even all the little ones like this. I collect them all and then I add it to um, my bouquets, you know, that I already made. So this is kind of double work for me, but after I cut these flowers, you know, I don't want, I don't want to throw them away at all. 
although I have to work harder, you know. I rather have these leftover flowers, leftover stem, to be with my local customers so they can enjoy them. Um, you know, there's a lot of people, I mean, I mean, if you are, um, you know, a florist or a farmer who do this for a living, it's important that you have to count the stem that you put in each bouquet, you know, because it does mean loss and um, profit. I don't really count my stem because I just, I don't know, I just don't want to. Um, I just want my local customers who like most of them become my friend already, you know, to have the most beautiful bouquets. I have such a good relationship with my local customers and most of them just return the mason jar or the vases that I put the flowers for them when I sold my flowers to them without, you know, asking. I received this question from a few people already. What kind of mason jar that I use for my rose size sand bouquet? So I just use regular 16 ounce pie jar and the the neck of the jar is regular neck. You don't want wide neck because it will be more difficult to put the flowers together, you know, because the wider the neck, the, the uh, stem, the flowers can kind of flop, you know, on the side and more difficult to make it look like this, this fan shape. And you can find these mason jars at your local glossy store or maybe Walmart. And um, you can get them from Amazon too. Sometimes grocery store is cheaper than Amazon, and sometimes Walmart is cheaper than everything else. But sometimes you know the price go up and down between places. So you can check them out. But um, if you don't wanna go anywhere, you can um, get from Amazon too. And I put the link in the description of this video. Okay. Them. And thank you for the mason jars. Of course, of course. I haven't done a garden tour video for a big while because you know I can get exhausted from talking too much. Um, you guys, some of you may know, some of you may not know that I am a little introvert. You know, I I don't like to talk a lot. I am pretty quiet in my real life. I mean, in my daily life. You know, outside the video. Um, Jason, the opposite though. Um, anyway, so um, I kind of put a lot of music on my videos just because you know sometimes I get tired after talking a lot. So I am going to give you a little mini garden tour inside this video, and I am going to shut my face from this part, you know, and just gonna show you what's are blooming in my garden. <laughs>
I don't sell a lot of flowers and bouquets anymore and I just show you the reason why. I, you know, used to cut a lot of flowers from my garden on um, Thursday night and Friday night and, you know, on the weekend when I am home, you know, after I finish everything, all my full-time work and all the bouquets, you know, side hustle, I have no flower left for myself to enjoy in the garden. This year I do a lot of planters and I leave a lot of flowers in the garden just you know for me to to feel like what I am doing still serving my original purpose you know is to have beautiful garden in my backyard to have like um flower sanctuary 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 and you know have like my little safe space beautiful I mean it's not the most beautiful world I mean it's not the most beautiful garden in the world but something that I create and I really enjoy I just can't believe I have to sow all these seeds around like by the end of the month and I want to share with you guys what I am going to sow just in case you know if you are looking to sow some perennial flowers or cool flowers you can um, order them now and you know sow them soon unless you are in a colder climate you know that you are going to get frost pretty soon first hollyhock because I sow some of them but I fell because I went on vacation and they dry up. I only have one survive. Delphinium from Johnny Seed. Next, Sea Holly. This is inspired by Jessie from Bear Flower Farm. If you watch her channel, if you know her, you know she she featured my garden in her channel before. Um, you know, Jessie is going through um, you know, very tough decision because her daughter um get cancer. I mean yeah, I really feel bad, you know, and but she's still showing up on YouTube. She's still, you know, working the garden. Um, I think, you know, that's because it helps her keep her mind, you know, um, healthy and, um, you know, just, you know, take a little break from worrying about, um, you know, her situation. So please send her love and, you know, maybe go to her channel and, um, you know, give her some comments you know to cheer her up okay um all right next one larkspur larkspur also akanisha white swan that i failed because i went on vacation and nigella you know some of them are from florida she's no longer sell this and this one i save for my garden they are such a beautiful gadu gadu flowers and a whole bunch of rubegia, some of them I saved from seed from my garden and some of them, you know, I still have left from last year. They are such a beautiful flowers and I just love them so much because they cheer me up. Also, they are native plants, just like the Echinacea. Also, the Calendula, they are beautiful spring flowers. They are edible flowers and they will bloom right around Mother's Day and I can use them for Mother's Day's bouquet. Okay? I also have about 137 
million thousand kinds of seeds that I have been buying from online store. You know, especially when they are on discount, and also the seed that I have caught that I have been collecting from my garden still. So, oh my God, I have to sow all this, and I don't have the time to go through all this with you because it can take like ten hours, okay, to go through all my seed. So, just pick one flower. Maybe two flowers, maybe three flowers, maybe ten flowers, and then you know, sow some of them, and you will thank yourself in spring and in next summer and in next fall and in next year and in next two year and in next three year and in next four year. And in the year. Monday morning blues. I open my eyes and I'm greeted by a cute little smile. The world is new with you by my side. Everything is beautiful. Tuesday afternoon, I'm calling you home just to hear your voice on the phone. I think of you, and I'm not alone. You are everything. I haven't made this kind of video for a big while because a couple months ago my YouTube channel went viral, and I got excited, becoming like thinking that I am becoming famous, you know. So I kept producing the same kind of videos that would go viral, like you know. Something with very exciting topic, or you know, jam packed with information. Um, but you know what? Since I, since I went on vacation with my mom and my sister and Jason, I slowed down a lot. I think, yeah. Um, and you know, I just miss making this kind of video, like in this video. You know, just like laid back, simple. And maybe boring a little bit, you know, but um, you know, just I, because you know this this kind of video make me feel like I am hanging out with flower friends, which I really needed, you know, from time to time. So I come up with this idea. I am going to name this kind of video um, "Flower Life Diaries." So it's gonna be content like this, you know, about my flower growing and arranging routine, and also, you know, I'm gonna share with you about what I learn from living, from life, not just my life, but also Jason's life, Finn's life, wildlife in my garden, the plant life in my garden, the bug's life, and also your life, because you know, I I read, I think. Almost all of your comments, um, and I respond to about maybe eighty percent, you know, because I can't go through them all. But I really do read your comments, so and I learn from you a lot about gardening and also about life, and that's why I named this series, you know, Flower Life Diaries. Um, you know, this kind of video is not going to grow my YouTube channel. You know, it's not gonna. Reach new subscribers. It's not gonna make me famous, but it will enrich our relationship. You know, it's pretty obvious because you are still here with me in the very end of this video. And you know, um, just just wanna let you know that going forward, if you sing, you know, this title, Flower Life Diaries, I wanna let you know that this video. Is is meant for you? I make this video specifically for you, who are um, you know interested to going through this journey with me. 
okay regardless of my youtube income regardless of my journey to become celebrity regardless of you know um, anything at all it's just me wanna hang out with you and that's why i will make videos like this the flower life diaries all right guys thank you so much again for your time i really do appreciate you know your time spending with me here okay bye bye see you in the next video